What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a quick review of my current bike build, which is going to be the 2020 Schwinn Boundary. Now there's a lot of great reviews and a lot of great videos on this bike online. Um, so I just wanted to give you my take on mine and sort of why I chose this. So let's do a quick little walk around and then I'll explain what I've done so far. Okay, so the main reason that I went with a Schwinn boundary is because I am six foot three, 265 pounds. So I'm a pretty big, tall guy. Now, this is a 29 inch mountain bike. So it's got a very large 19 inch frame with 29 inch wheels. So I got this at Walmart. In the specifications from Walmart says that this bike is actually good for riders six foot and up. Now, again, I'm 6'3", so it fits me perfectly fine but I would probably recommend that you go sit on this bike and adjust the seat post to see if you can fit on this bike because it is a large frame, large bike. And if you're right around six foot, you might wanna try scaling down to a 27.5 or a different 29er just because of the size of this bike. So that was the main reason I went for this bike is because I wanted something for my size and my weight. Now, a couple other reasons I went with this bike is because for many years, I've struggled finding a good budget-friendly mountain bike because most of the ones that have the features that I wanted are well over $1,000, okay? So this one here really caught my eye when it came out. Now, as you can see here, one of the good features that this bike has is a tapered front head tube which allows you to change out your forks to different custom forks if you find the need to do so, which is something on my to-do list because these are still the factory shocks. They do okay, but they're not that great. As you can see here, they're not adjustable. Um, they're, they're really not that great, to be honest with you. I mean, at my height and weight, as soon as I get on the bike, I'm already compressing them a little bit. And when I'm flying down trails or just general trail riding, I can feel that they don't damper very well just because they're not the greatest. So that is probably something I will be uh, upgrading here in the near future, probably next spring in 2021. I'm probably gonna get some new shocks for the front. So the front tapered head tube is a very, very positive thing in my opinion, especially for future upgrades. Another thing I wanna point out are rear and front mechanical disc brakes. Now these are not hydraulic, they're mechanical. So upgrading to a hydraulic disc brake is something that will be happening very soon. Again, I got a few more upgrades I plan on doing to this bike probably after Christmas so I can get ready for the 2021 spring riding season. But I probably will be going with the Shimano 200 uh, hydraulic disc brakes. So I'll get those changed out here in the very near future as well. But these are still the factory mechanical disc brakes, which I will say they do a decent job for general riding. Okay, so if you're just general trail riding and just riding around the neighborhood or on a very light path, you'll be fine with these. You probably don't need to upgrade them. But if you're going to start taking it down some uh, mountainsides and some you know steeper trails, a lot of uh, jumps, you definitely are going to want to upgrade to some hydraulic disc brakes because these ones here, I have to pretty much three finger or four finger squeeze them as I'm flying down a hill and I'm not stopping that quick. So for general trail riding, perfectly fine. Anything above and beyond that, you might want to upgrade to hydraulic disc brakes as well. But they are set up with mechanical disc brakes from the factory, which is a great starting point. Another thing I will point out is going to be a one by, which is really nice. So this right here is a one by, so you don't have to have multiple shifters on the left side. You only have your shift on the right, which is the Pro Rush 7 speed that comes with this new version. So that right there is a one by seven. It does come with a nice Pro Rush derailleur which again, works pretty well. I, need, I needed to make a couple minor adjustments to the uh, high and low limit screws, but other than that, it was pretty easy. But overall, I'm really happy with the ease and function and quality of this one by seven. It does the job perfectly fine. It gives me the range I need for mountain biking where I tend to mountain bike, which are pretty much backwoods trails and some light downhill trails with some light jumps. But I do want to start getting into further mountain biking 
Again, this is my entry level to get into the sport, but I do want to get into it further, which is why I will be making some further upgrades to this bike. But again, I just really like this particular bike because I felt it was a great starting platform for someone to build to start getting into this mountain biking sport. It has very nice wide handlebars, which I really like. It has an adjustable seat, not a dropper post, it's, and it's not even drilled for a dropper post. Now the new Schwinn Axum, I think the blue one, uh, the Axum DP, that's like $500. That does come with a dropper post, but I haven't really felt the need for it yet. I'm not that aggressive in the sport yet to want those type of features. So those are just a few of the things that I really liked about the bike, which from factory are the front tapered head tube, the one by, and the front and rear disc brakes. Now let's talk about a couple things that I've done to it so far. So the bike does come with this like real nice metallic green. It's hard to see today because it's not very sunny out, but it does have a nice flake to it. So it's kind of like a very dark green, almost black look, but in the right light, you can see a green metallic to it, which is really nice. But I did upgrade the grips. I got some better lock on grips here. I got these off of Amazon. So I'll put the link in the description for all the upgrades I've done to this bike, but I got these really nice lock on grips. I got some metal screw in end caps here, which are really nice. Um, I don't really like the plastic ones that come with a lot of the grips. You just push them in because anytime you're trying to change out your grips or adjust them, as soon as you start pulling them out, they break and snap. These ones are actually a compression fit metal plate that works really well. And they were very cheap on uh, Amazon, which I'll put in the description as well. So again, I did replace the hand grips to some nicer lock-ons. I did replace the seat. This is a Yaffe seat. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correct or not, but I like this particular one because it does keep with that nice racing look. It does keep with the color theme of the bike. It is a little bit more padded. It has a little bit more padding here, as you can see here, even up here. Over the factory bike, it does have the cutout for, for airflow. Um, I really like this seat overall. Um, I didn't want a bike seat that was too too big or too stupid looking on the bike. Um, obviously, I know there's some people out there that really just focus on comfort. I actually want to go for comfort, but I also want to go for the style of the bike too because I want it to look good. But I'll tell you this, I've tried different seats before that might that might be a little wider. And when you're pedaling, they actually rub on my thighs and don't feel good. This has a nice cutout, which again, it does offer really nice support. It does offer pretty good comfort and it looks good on the bike. The next upgrade I did were some race face pedals. These are the Chester ones. So they do come with the nice spikes, top and bottom, mainly because the factory ones have those little plastic nubs and there are times where I was kind of going through the woods, going down some trails, and my feet would slide off the pedals. So I wanted something with a little bit more of an aggressive stance to it that would kind of lock my feet into the pedals a little bit more. So I went with the green race face Chester pedals. And uh, again, any of these upgrades I'm talking about, I'll put in the description. So that's what I've done so far to it, was pretty much I changed out the hand grips, the seat and the pedals. My future upgrades coming soon are going to be uh, hydraulic disc brakes front and back and some type of a budget friendly fork upgrade, maybe like a Sun Tour or something like that that might be around 200 bucks, uh, give or take. But so far, I got to say, I really like this bike. It's very comfortable. It rides really nice. It has a great size to it for me. Again, I'm 6'3", 265 pounds, so it really does the job for me. Uh, but I would definitely recommend, if you get a chance, go to the store, check out this bike. But I'll say for $248, you can't beat this bike for a, as a, for a platform to start with. Now, if you're going to start getting into changing out your hubs, changing out your tires for tubeless, changing out like pretty much everything on the bike, then you'd really have to do a comparison to find out, is that worth it or not? But I would say this, if you are thinking about those upgrades when it comes to a budget, if you're thinking about changing out the hubs, the forks, the tires, pretty much everything except the frame, but you don't have the money to do it now or anytime soon, these are gonna be upgrades you're gonna do over the course of a couple years, then I'd say this is a great option. Because again, any other bike that has a lot of these features, 
uh, right out of the gate are gonna probably cost you well over a thousand dollars. But for a nice high quality 29er that will get you out on the road and get you out onto the trails and uh, gives you a great amount of high end mountain biking features right out of the gate, but also gives you the ability to make some upgrades later, this would be the bike I'd recommend. There's a Schwinn Axum out there, which is really nice too. I personally haven't really figured out the main difference between the regular Schwinn Axum and the Schwinn Boundary. I haven't really seen any major differences between the two, except the price. This is 250 bucks and the Axum is $400. Now the DP Axum, which is the dropper post version, that's $500. But really, if you just compare the regular Schwinn Axum, which is $400 to this bike here, which is $250, I still think you're getting the best bang for your buck on this Schwinn boundary. But that's it, that's my bike so far. I really like the overall look of it. It has a nice look, nice light aluminum frame. Now again, the shocks are not the lightest, but again, the frame is a really great platform to start with, all aluminum, tapered head tube. It comes standard with the one by, 29 inch wheels. The Pro Rush derailleur is pretty nice. And what's also cool about this is it comes with a clutch. Now, for some of you that might not understand what a clutch does, is it actually stops a lot of the forward movement of your derailleur here. Now, if you turn it off and you're hitting some major trails, you're gonna have a lot more chain slap. Your chain's gonna flop around a lot more. But with the, with the clutch on, which is it, it's in the on position now, that's gonna really help control a lot of that chain slap and really control the amount of chain drops you have going down a mountainside. Now, is it perfect? Probably not. I'm just saying that in my experience with my trail riding, again, I'm not that aggressive yet. But for my trail riding, that derailleur with the clutch has really done me a solid. So I can't complain about it so far. Okay, so that's it. That is my impression of the 2020 Schwinn Boundary 29 inch mountain bike. Again, this is a fantastic bike. It rides very nice and it is a great platform for a starter trail worthy mountain bike. So that's it guys. I just wanted to give you a quick rundown on my Schwinn Boundary mountain bike, why I like it, why I chose it, and I'm really happy with it. Uh, I'm gonna continue doing a couple more upgrades. Again, probably in the spring, I'm gonna do a fork upgrade and probably some hydraulic disc brakes. But other than that, I'm really happy with it and I'm gonna continue riding this bike and continue getting further and further into this uh, sport and start going onto some more aggressive trails and seeing what I can really put this through its paces. But again, I'm 6'3", 265 pounds. And so far I've been really working this bike hard and I'm really happy with it. And again, if you wanna see more upgrade videos on this bike, just hit that thumbs up button, leave me a comment and let me know what you'd like to see. But overall, I'm really happy with this bike. And uh, if you're considering this bike, do it, just go for it. I mean, 250 bucks, what do you got to lose? It's a great bike to start with, but it has a great potential to uh, grow it into something more trail worthy. So again, thank you all for watching this video. Do me a favor, again, hit that thumbs up button, leave me a comment, let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. It definitely helps me out. It lets me know you like these types of videos. So again, the more videos and more content you guys actually enjoy watching, I'll start trying to put more out uh, in that regard. So again, thank you. And as always, see you in the next video.